Alright guys, this is Matt from Has Geek, and uh, this is going to be our part 2 of the Drakari and Dark Eldar uh, review. So we've already covered the HQ section in part 1, and a general overview of the indexes in general. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cover troops and transports as well, because the troop section isn't particularly very big. So we'll cover the uh, transports as well. So we're going to dive straight in to the Carbolite Warriors. Okay, the Carbolite Warriors uh, quite standard really, just like like they used to be really. Uh, movement 7, Weapon Skill 3+, plus, Ballistic Skill 3+, plus, Strength and Toughness 3, 1 Wound, 1 Attack, Leadership 7 and a 5 plus save. The Cyberite, which is basically their Sergeant, has an additional attack and an additional leadership. And I believe that's it. They have Power Rating 3, and in that Power Rating you get uh, 5 models. I'm not going to do, like I say, I'm not going to cover power rating too much because um, I'm going to be doing mostly match play. So we'll skip to the back. Still really dislike the layout. Uh, Carbolite Warrior, there's seven points each. So seven points for a standard Carbolite Warrior. You then have to obviously buy his equipment. So it comes with a splinter rifle. Uh, splinter rifle should be, yeah, zero points. So he's seven points. Um, minimum squad size is. Just missed it, there we go. Minimum squad size, squad size is five, <clears throat> so it's seven points each, needing five, it's 35 points. So as a flat troops choice, it's very, very cheap. Um, it's quite durable, splinter rifle, has, hasn't changed. Um, it's still 24 inches, uh, still rapid fire, basically. Um, wounds everything on four plus, no AP, just one, just one damage. That's not really changed at all since uh, seventh edition. The upgrades, mostly for the Cyberite, um, so we'll do w war gear options, we'll cover the weapons and stuff, what they can have, it's a bit paper there. Um, weapon options, the Cyberite may take a power sword or agonizer, now I don't forget, it doesn't actually state points for the Cyberites in, in, the, uh, in the match play section, so basically you just, you just get one for free, so you might as well just declare one as a Cyberite, I think that's the same for everything in all the index books, so sergeants for squads, um, basically, yeah, basically sergeants for squads just get, you know, as a free upgrade, so yeah, you might as well take it. But yeah, Cyberite may take Power Sword or Agonizer. From what we've spoken about already, the, we already know what an Agonizer does. Uh, power Sword is just a generic Power Sword. Points for them, uh, Agonizer is at four points, which is a, you know, a good solid choice. And a power sword is also four points. Uh, if you're going to choose one of them, I would choose the agonizer because it wins everything on a four plus, unless it's a vehicle, so it's sixes. Uh, it's AP minus two, does one damage. The power sword is strength as user. Now, don't forget, you're only strength three, so most of the time you're going to be wounding things on fives. So that's why the agonizer pips it to the post, really. It's got better AP, AP minus three, but you know, you're going to be harder to wound stuff, so I'd always choose an agonizer for a, for a better choice. Then you can obviously have the Cyberite may take a fi uh, Phantasm Grenade Launcher. And a Phantasm Grenade Launcher is... 3 points. And that does... Range 18, Assault D3, Strength 1, no AP, 1 damage. Now you might be thinking, well, I might take it, it's only Strength 1. Uh, the special rules for that weapon is if a unit is hit by one or more Phantasm Grenade Launcher, subtract one from its leadership until the end of the turn. So basically you shoot at a unit, as long as you hit it, you, that unit's minus one uh, leadership. It's quite good when it comes to morale phase. Um, we already know how deadly the morale phase can be if, if models don't, you know, if, if models, units, sorry, lose plenty of models. So they're going to be at minus one leadership. Um, strength one, you, you can, you're almost guaranteed not to do any damage with it, so you know don't expect to be doing damage with it too much. Cyberite may replace his splinter rifle with splinter pistol or a blaster, blast pistol. Um, again, splinter pistol, we already know what that does. Blaster pistol, we all know what that does. We covered them in the HQ section. If you're going to go with an agonizer, the blaster pistol might not be a bad shout. Um, because obviously you intend on getting into combat. Blast pistol is 10 points though, but at least with that blaster pistol you're going to be able to wound vehicles and stuff in combat. So it might be quite a handy choice if you're going to do that. If to save points you just want a splinter pistol, it's just 
uh, straight up zero points and we already covered the splints pistol in the previous video and at the bottom here for every 10 models one carbolite warrior may replace his splinter rifle with a splinter cannon or dark lance uh, okay so dark lance is range 36 strength 8 minus 4 ap d6 damage that's, that's, that's basically dark eldar's bread and butter really dark lance or splinter cannon which is range 36 rapid fire 3 uh, strength, you ruined everything on 4 plus unless it's a vehicle, AP nothing and damage 1. Uh, so because of rapid fire 3, if you get within 18 inches of an enemy unit, you're shooting 6 times, not 3. Um, again, it just depends what you want the Dark Elder unit to do. Because you can now split fire, both are a, a valid option. You can take the Splint Cannon obviously for anti-infantry, anti-hordes, anti-monster. Uh, but the Dark Lance, because you can because you can actually now split fire you, you know it's it's quite a quite a good choice really uh splinter cannon i believe is 15 points yep splinter cannon is 15 points dark lance is 20 points so the points are going to rack up there but if you're going to take carb light warriors i would always recommend them putting them in a vehicle um so if the vehicle moves because the uh Dark Lance is heavy, if the vehicle moves you're at minus one to hit because it moved but the uh, splinter cannon is rapid fire so there's no, no negatives to, to shooting really so it just depends how you want to kit them out really, both are a viable option, I can't choose one over the other really, it just depends what, you, what you're fighting and what you, you know what you, what you want to kit them out to do and right at the bottom here one model may replace its splinter rifle with a shredder or a blaster if the model includes 20, if the unit sorry includes 20 models, one model one other model may do so. Uh, shredder, not the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder. Uh, shredders are 12 inches, range Assault D3, not range, sorry, a type, sorry, Assault D3, strength 6, no AP, 1 damage, and when attacking infantry units, you can re roll failed rolls to win with this weapon. So, short range, random shots, quite high strength. No AP, one damage. It's not a bad option, but you have to be really, really close for that. Uh, I would always go with the blaster, which is range 18, assault one, strength eight, minus four AP, D3 damage. So again, that's good for killing, or putting wounds onto vehicles, putting wounds onto heavily armored infantry, terminators and things. Um, so yeah, that's the blaster is what I would go for, really. Uh, they've got power from pain, so that's always good. We've already, already covered the power from pain table. We won't need to go into that too much. Um, Keyword, faction keyword and keywords, no, don't really need to go into that. So the carb light warriors, I'll just quickly have a quick glaze over what my experience with them so far in 8th edition. Right, so my experience with carb light warriors is they are a sound troops choice option because they're cheap, they're uh, 7 points each. Unit 10 is only 70 points, 5 is obviously going to be 35 points. You can kit them out to basically whatever you want, they're almost like a... Um, like a Swiss Army knife, you can get them out to take out vehicles, give them a blaster and a dark lance. Get them out to take out troops, give them just give them a splinter, uh, splinter cannon. Um, they have only got a five plus save, um, but obviously if you put them wholly in cover, they're going to get a four plus save. So if I were yours, if I was going to be taking them, it, it depends really. It depends how you're going to kit them out. You can put them in a venom. Venoms have a transport capacity of five. We'll, we'll come to them in a bit. Or you can put them in a raider. Raiders have a transport capacity of ten, so obviously they're a little bit extra, a um, little bit extra protected in a raider because a raider has raider has more wounds than a venom. You can obviously get more models in a raider um, because they're both open top. You can fire out of it. So it just depends really how you're going to kit them out. I've kit them out with a squad of five, so it's going to be thirty-five points with a blaster. So forty-five points with a blaster. Cyberite's always been free, so I've always put him in the squad, and I've always put them in a Venom. At, at the minute, I've not played with them in a Raider as of yet, but I would probably say it's quite a viable option. It's something that I will choose to do eventually. I am currently on my to-do on my to-do list. Um, I have got another squad of ten Carb Light Warriors to to do and completely finish. I also bought another box of Carb Light Warriors to boost up and change out weapon loadouts for my other two squads that are currently painted so when it's all done and dusted i'll be able to have three squads of 10 in raiders or i can have six squads 
a five in venoms or kitted out with with whatever I want to use really. So they are still a very good, very viable choice, and they're really good choice as well for getting those command points because I think it's the I think is it called the battalion detachment where you must have two HQ and three troops. Your three troops are thirty five points each for for a squad of five, so. You know, you're not looking at a, a massive amount of points. Your two HQ choices, obviously, if you're just sh taking up straight, um, straight Dark Eldar, you know, your cheapest option was the uh, what was it called? Uh, Archon. It's 54 points, I believe it was, with no gear. But obviously, you're going to put bits of gear on that. So, a good combination would be to have a homunculus. Give the homunculus basic gear, and then if the if the homunculus is within six inches of the venoms, he's going to give the venoms plus one toughness because of the homunculus common keyword. So it's a very very viable option, very very good way to to go around doing that. So that's carb light warriors. We're going to now move on to witches. Again, the layout of the book isn't great because you would expect witches to be straight away. It's not. It's carb light warriors. Then tr then trueborn. And then we'll go on to witches. So we're going to go on to witches now. So witches. Witches are movement 8, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength and toughness 3, 1 wound, 1 attack, 7 leadership and a 6 plus save. The Hecatrix, which is basically their sergeant, has an additional attack and additional leadership. Just like the Cyberite does for the Carblight Warriors. Again, it's a free option. Take it. There's no points for it at the back, so it's just classed as a free upgrade. They are power rating 3 plus, or 3, so for 5 models, including the Hectrix, is three, 3 power rating. Points wise, which is are 9 points each, so they're 2 points more than a Carbolite Warrior. So, for your 2 points more. I don't think you get. You think you're you're only getting the extra one to the movement flat, and the carb light warrior has better save. So it'll be gear and rules for um for, for the will be the big changes. Uh, Hectrix will go down to war gear option straight away. Hectrix can take a phantasm grenade launcher, so we already know that that's three points. We already know what that does because it's in the carb light section. Um, again, it's quite a good option because you're going to be getting into combat. You're going to be up close. You're going to you, you are going to hit on a three plus with D three shots. You should be hitting, and because you're going to be causing wounds in combat, it is quite a good option. So again, if you've got the three point spare, you know take it. Oh, what if I were you? The Hegatrix may replace her splinter pistol with a blaster pistol. Again, <clears throat> you're going to be getting into combat. That's their whole purpose. Um, taking that extra bit of war gear that's able to deal damage to vehicles and heavily armoured heavily armoured units really uh, it's really really handy it's, te it's 10 points I, I would probably recommend a blaster pistol for most Hecatrixes if you're going to uh, also the Hecatrix may replace her Hecatri blade uh, for a power sword or agonizer well, what's a Hecatri blade? Hecatri blade is strength as user AP nothing and just does one damage the bearer can make one additional attack with this weapon. So she basically has three attacks base. She is only strength three and no AP. So power sword and agonizer. For the four points extra, I would give her the agonizer. Uh, she's only going to have two attacks, which is fair enough. But she's just, you know, she's going to be wounded everything on fours again. For four four points is so 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 cheap. Whether I think Games Workshop have actually underpointed it. Um, yeah, I, th I think they've definitely underpointed that the agonizer because being able to wound everything on fours. I mean, if you get in combat with a wraith knight, you wound him on fours. Uh, that's really going to annoy the the, um, the Eldar player um, because it's obviously a gargantuan creature. It's not classed as a vehicle. Same for Tau, all their big suits, their uh, storm surge, riptides, things like that. They're all monstrous creatures, not vehicles. So you're literally going to be ruining their day. Tyranids as well. Yeah, I go with the agonizer every day of the week for them. Uh, one witch may replace her splinter pistol and hectra blade with either razor flails, hydro gauntlets, or shardnet and impaler. If the unit numbers ten or more models, a further two witches can do this. So if you've got under ten models, you can have one special weapon in the squad, special melee weapon. 
If you've got ten or more, you can have three. So, we'll go into these and cover these. Uh, they obviously all have a sprint pistol, uh, sprint pistol, which you don't have to pay points for. Hecatri blade basically gives you plus one attack. Uh, that is zero points as well. I'm not going to check that because there's, there's no point because it is zero points anyway. Okay, Hydro Gauntlets. Hydro Gauntlets are obviously used in melee. Their strength is user, AP minus one, damage one. Each time the bearer fights, it can make one additional attack with this weapon. So basically, you, whoever has got their Hydro Gauntlets can still make one additional attack, which is cool. You can re-roll wound rolls. So if you've got three of them in the squad, that's going to be six attacks, and you're re-rolling wounds. So it's not a bad option. It's minus one AP, so at least there's something. Um, Let's have a look. Let's have a look at what points they are. Hydra Gauntlets is yeah, four points, so cheap enough for an extra one AP. Not bad. Yeah, not too bad. It's, it's quite a good option. And then we've got Razor Flails. Razor Flail is strength as user, AP minus one, and damage one. So exactly the same as a Hydra Gauntlet. Each time the bear fights, it can make one additional attack with this weapon, exactly the same as a Hydra Gauntlet. You can re-roll failed hit rolls with this weapon. So rather than re-roll wounds, you're re-rolling hits. Now the, the, the thing between the two is your weapon skill is 3 plus anyway. And when you move into turn 3, you're getting plus 1 to hit anyway. Um, because of power from pain. These do have power from pain also. We'll come to their um, abilities at the bottom in a minute. So, being able to reroll to hit isn't really as viable as being able to reroll to wound because you're only strength three. I would probably recommend the Hydro Gauntlets over the Razor Flails because you reroll to wound. So, you know, your strength three doesn't really matter too much. You're going to be wounding things on fives. I know it's not it's not great, but because you're re-rolling that, you fails. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot better option, a lot viable choice. And the Razor Flails. Uh, also four points. So again, I would definitely take the Hydra Gauntlets over the Razor Flails. The Razor Flails do make nice models, though. They do look really, really cool. Um, I have made three up um, recently because I do have two units of ten witches already painted, already done and dusted. I've also I bought another box, so I'm able to kit them out how I want. Um, so I've got an additional three Razor Flails and three. Chardonnay and Impalers and three Hydra Gauntlets uh, just to put into units and you know change models out so I've got the option to, to do so. So speaking of Chardonnay and Impaler, Chardonnay and Impaler is uh, strength is user AP minus one but it is two damage so being two, doing two damage now it's, it's a lot better off so you're better off at killing Terminators and things like that. Obviously you're only AP minus one so Terminators are only going to get three plus save rather than two plus save which isn't great but you're doing two damage, so those wounds that do go through, you are going to be killing those Terminators. So a Chardonnay and Impaler is five points. So one additional point. You're not getting the additional attack as compared to the other two, but you are doing two damage rather than one. Hmm. So is that a viable option? I would say yes, it is. I would say the Razor Flails would be the least favourite choice of mine um, and then it would be a toss up between Chardonnay and Impaler and the Hydra Gauntlets. Hydra Gauntlets because you can reroll your wounds and Chardonnay and Impaler because it does two damage. Um, also gives got here uh, Dark Light Grenades so Dark Light Grenade Dark Light Grenade is free so I assume that these just have it um, I'll cover this because I don't think we've covered that yet. Dialogue Grenade is a range of 6. It's grenade D6. So when you throw your grenade it's D6. Which is pretty cool. Strength 4. AP minus 1. And does 1 damage. So AP minus it's not, not quite a bad, not a bad choice. Though, but it's only 6 inch range. So you want to be getting close to use it. But you're witches. So you're going to be getting close anyway. So abilities wise you've got power from pain. Combat drugs. Now we've already covered combat drugs. But because you can choose your combat drugs now, it gives you a lot more versi you know, makes these a very versatile unit. So if you're deciding to give them plus one attack, the Chardonnay and Impaler is 
going to be a lot better because you're going to be having two attacks now. So you're going to have six attacks at minus one AP and two damage. Or you could give them plus one strength. So they're going to be strength four now. So again, it's it's very, very... You really do have to think now of what you're going to give your units. Um, being able to choose or roll um, is, is a very, very thought out process of how you how you want to do it really um, so yeah you, you can do some really good combinations there so the hydro gauntlets obviously strength is user you're re rolling wounds so if you're going to give if you can give them plus one attack uh, they're going to have three attacks each not just two and you're re rolling wounds or you can give them plus one uh, plus one strength so if you're giving them plus one strength they're actually going to strength four so they're going to be f fours to wound normal marines and you can reroll your fair rolls to wound. So comb having combinations of your combat drugs and your weapons are very, very important for witches nowadays. Whereas you just used to roll and sometimes you used to forget or you used to hope you rolled something really good. Now you can choose it. It's, it's a very, very thought out process of, of how you want to do it now. Other special abilities have got dodge, so a four plus invulnerable save in the fight phase. Now this is, the way this is worded is a lot better and a lot clearer. Whereas previously they had to be in combat, so if you charged in, you wouldn't get your five plus and vulnerable save in in Overwatch. Whereas here it says in the fight phase, so do you get it from Overwatch? Um, possibly. I've not got the rule book here to, to check, but in the in the fight phase, I think you might actually get your four plus and vulnerable save in in while you're being Overwatched. Unless that's the charge phase, I don't know. Comment and let me know. Uh, let me know what you think and what. Um, how you think it's, it's better worded? Uh, I've not got the rule book on me. It is, I think it's in the house, but I'd, I'd be terrorised by the children. Um, so I shall just sit out here as slightly more peaceful. Um, so yeah, five plus and uh, four plus and vulnerable save in combat. And we've got no escape. Uh, no escape is a special rule where you roll off if an enemy unit or enemy infantry unit within one inch of these models with this ability wishes to fall back. The enemy unit can only fall back if the player commanding it wins the roll off. So if you're against uh, a unit of 50 conscripts, you manage to make it into combat, you survive, you kill some of their models, and they want to they want to they want to fall back. They have you, you basically roll a dice. So you, you roll a dice, or your opponent rolls a dice. And your opponent has to beat you to actually fall back. So if you roll a five, your opponent has to physically beat you. So he has to roll a six to fall back. If he rolls a 5 or less, you basically win the roll off and they cannot fall back. You have locked that combat, locked that unit in combat, which can be really really good because obviously it keeps you in combat and you can then not be shot at that turn because you're really really good in combat. Well, better survivability with a 4 plus and vulnerable save. So it really does make them a really good tar pit unit being able to lock uh, infantry units in combat. Now it does specifically state infantry so that's something to always remember. They do have unit capacity of 20, so if you're able to foot slog them across the board, and they have only got a six plus save, they've only got a movement of eight, so you're better off gonna be putting them in, in raiders, I, I believe. Um, raiders, we're gonna to come to them in a bit, but troop capacity of 10, you're gonna be moving that raider right up across the board to get these in combat turn two. So that, my, uh, views on witches and how I've um, used them previously. I've not yet used them in this edition, it's something that I, I do want to uh, I do want to try, I do want to try a complete combat Dark Eldar list. It's something I will try uh, on the channel, something I, want, I just want to speak to my opponents about, let them know I will be using you know a combat list, so it's something I really do want to try. I've not tried them yet, if you've tried them, if you've had experience with them, comment and let me know, and let everybody else know how you've got on, how you've kitted them out, um, they are quite a good viable option now compared to how they used to be in 7th edition. Okay, our final troop's choice is Rax, but again it's all muddled up here. Rax. So Rax at the top of the page. So Rax and movement 7, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attack, leadership 7, 6 plus save. The sergeant of the unit, which is the Akathist, Akathist. 
can't pronounce it, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an Aklathist. Has uh, plus one attack, plus one leadership, just the same as all the other sergeant upgrades in the uh, for the Dark Eldar. So we'll quickly go on to the points. Racks are ten points each, so they're one point more than a witch, and three points more than a Carbolite Warrior. The unit size is five to ten. The power rating three, if people need to know. That's, that comes with four racks and an uh, Arkathist. So, war gear options. For every five models in the unit, one rack may, may take a liquefier gun or ossifactor. So a liquefier gun, pretty much the same as it used to be to a certain degree. So it's range eight, obviously it's the same range as the, the old flame template. Assault D6, strength three, AP D3, damage one. So you're obviously gonna roll for that AP every time um, every time you shoot it basically and this weapon automatically hits so a very very good option the fact that it's only strength 3 is a bit of a pain um, it would have been nice if it, if it was strength 4 but unfortunately it is only strength 3 but the the fact that it's going to be AP it could be AP minus 3 you know it's, it's, that's going to be quite cool really um, and it's D6, obviously D6 shots the other factor is range 24 inches assault 1 um, strength star AP minus three one damage this weapon wounds on a two plus unless the target is a vehicle in which case it wounds on a six if a model is slain by this weapon the model's unit immediately suffers a d6 mortal wound on a d6 roll of four plus so if you kill a model you are basically gonna kill another model on a four plus as well so it would be nice if you could take more than just one one Ossa Factor really for every for every five models. So if you max out the unit, you can take ten. It'd be really nice actually if you could take five and almost have it as like a sniper squad. That that'd have been really really cool. Uh, whether they do that in the future, I don't know. Um, let's hope they do because that'd be cool. Um, it'd also make them really overpowered. <laughs> but unfortunately, we'll we'll see what happens with them. The Arcthist may take items from the weapons of torture or the tools of torture list so liquefy gun, we'll see how many points that is first liquefy gun is 13 points also factor is also 13 points okay so hmm homunculus tools these are basically the combat combat weapons that, that they have uh, type melee strength star you are always wounding um, models on a 4 plus unless the target is a vehicle so basically poison really uh, homunculus tools are 1 point I'm, I'm not going to bother going into them because I already know they're 1 point AP 0 dash uh, damage 1 so uh, are they a good combat option probably not quite as viable as witches but they're still quite good because they're, they, have, they are toughness 4 and yeah, they're not bad. They're not a bad option. Uh, they get power from pain, so yeah, so they are kitted out for combat. If you get, if you think of the power pain, power from pain list, so they can reroll charges as of turn two. They get the six plus three on pain from turn one. Uh, they get plus one to their weapon skill basically turn three. Um, they have a special ability called insensible to pain. Models with this ability have five plus invulnerable save. So they have a five plus invulnerable save, and they have a six plus feel no pain as of turn one for, from power from pain. So we'll go into the archivist and what weapons he can take from weapons of torture and the tools of torment. So the weapons of torture and tools of torment. I have to skip to the front see what's. So weapons of torment, hex rifle. So we already know what a hex rifle does because the uh, homunculus can have it, so I won't bother going over that. We already know what a liquefier gun is, and we know what a stinger pistol is as well, because they were all covered in the homunculus section. So that means you can take an additional liquefier gun. So if you have an archivist and a unit of ten, it basically means you can have three liquefier guns. So that's not too bad. It's three d six shots. It's quite a viable option, I suppose. Weapons of Torture, Agonizer, I won't go into that, we know, we know what that is already, we know how many points it is. Electrosive Whip, um, we have covered that as well I believe in the homunculus. 
flesh gauntlet. I don't know whether we've covered flesh gauntlet, so. So, yes, let's go over the melee weapons that they can have. See all these pages, it'd be so much easier if they were all, if they were together, really. So, flesh gauntlet. Uh, melee weapon flesh gauntlet is strength as user AP 0 damage 1 basically poisons for poison 4 plus and 6 is to wound vehicles each time you roll a wound of a, of a 6 plus other than against a vehicle the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to any other damage so so you get an additional mortal wound if you roll a 6 to to wound if you if you actually wound the model uh, so that means if the model actually fails its armor save, so it's got to physically take a wound. Um, flesh gauntlet, mind phase gauntlet, mind phase gauntlet, strength as user, zero AP, damage two, no special rules. Scissor hand, scissor hand is. Millie, again wounds on four plus vehicles are only wounded on sixes. Each time the bearer fights, it can make one additional attack. That's not too bad. And it is AP minus one and does one damage. And finally, a Venom Blade. Venom Blade wounds everything on a two plus unless it's a vehicle, so it's sixes. AP zero, damage one. So points for them. Uh, melee weapons. Venom blade is five points. Uh, Mind phase gauntlet is four points. Flesh gauntlet is six points. Wow. Yeah. So I still think the electros electrosive whip is it. Electrosive whip, which is eight points, is actually going to be a better option for the. Sergeant of the unit. Uh, so, Electrosive Whip is basically the same as an Agonizer. Uh, wins everything on a 4 plus vehicles, win on a 6s. Same AP, but it is 2 damage. So, that would probably be a better option for, the, for that Sergeant if you're going to go close combat. So. So, the art. The arc of this may take weapons from the tools of torture and the tools of torment. So it means you can take one of each. So you can take the liquefier gun and the corrosive whip. Okay, that's not too bad. I didn't spot that before. So that's and or. So one or the. So it's not. It's not just one or the other. It's you can you can take both if you want to. So it's quite a viable choice, really. Um. So, hmm. the way I'd kit these out is. Again, probably a unit of 10 to get them across the board because they're toughness 4. Uh, I'd probably take liquefy guns over the Ossofactors and I would probably have the Arcthis take a liquefy gun as well. So there's three liquefy guns because you're going to be getting up close. The, the range, the 8 inch range isn't going to be too much of a problem. Get the... I get the uh, Arcthis. There's a plane going over. Can't stop the planes going over because I live near an airport. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the Arcthus give him an, uh, one of the whips, the Electrosive Whip, because you're going to be getting him to combat. They are tough on us four, but combined with the Homunculus, don't forget in the in the HQ section, Homunculus gives all Homunculus Commons unit plus one toughness. So it actually makes them toughness five. It makes them a very, very sturdy choice now uh, for a troop choice. You know, a troop choice of toughness five is, is quite a big deal nowadays. I've not used racks yet. I intend to. I have got a unit of 10 unpainted at the minute. I have ordered another few boxes. Um, well, a box of another model, which I will be converting uh, because I can't justify spending £20. Is it £20? £20 for five models. So, being the hobbyist I am and the, the <laughs> homeowner, family man I am, I can't justify spending spending all that money on five models so I've bought a box of 20 models of another game type which I will then convert into racks. 
So that's it for troop choices. So what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly cover the transport choices. Obviously, and have these all in the, the same video just to make it easier. Okay, so transport options. We'll start off with the Raider. Raider has a weapon skill of 4 plus, strength, five, uh, strength 6, toughness 5, 10 wounds, 7 leadership. I don't know why it has a leadership, it just does. And a 4 plus save. Now, the movement is in the damage section, so you've got a movement of 14. So it's straight up movement of 14 if you're unwounded. Ballistic skill of 3 plus, and it has 3 attacks, so that's why you're unwounded. That's 6 to 10, so while you've got 6 to 10 wounds left, that's what you've got. When you've got 3 to 5 wounds left, your movement drops down to 10, ballistic skill drops to 4 plus, your, your attack is D3. And when you drop down to 1 to 2 wounds remaining, your movement is 6, and your weapon, uh, your ballistic skill sorry, is 5 plus, and your attack is 1. So the Raider has a power rating of 6. I'm going to quickly skip to the points at the back, see how many points it is. The Raider is 95 points, so quite a big jump compared to what it used to be, but from what I can tell you from actually using a Raider, it is a lot more survivable now. It's not just the one-shot pop like it used to be, because being open-topped, things having good AP, you know, you, it was going to die first turn if you weren't ca careful with it. But because it's got wounds now and a toughness. It's a lot more survival, a lot more than you think. I was very optimistic until I actually used it. So, weapon options. It can have a Dark Lance, and a Dark Lance is 20 points. Uh, I'm not gonna check that because we already know how much a Dark Lance is. Oh, the light in here is terrible. I don't know what's going on. I think it's gone really cloudy outside. Um, so Dark Lance is 20 points, we already know what that is. It's range 36, heavy 1, strength 8, AP minus 4, damage D6. But the saving grace is because it's heavy here, it's obviously going to be minus 1 to hit if it moves because it's a heavy weapon. But because it's Dark Eldar, change the weapon type from Assault to Heavy if it's equipped on a vehicle. So because it's equipped on the Raider, it's going to be an Assault weapon, so you can move you can even disembark from combat and still shoot at your full ballistic skill, which is massive, which is a massive change. Um, it really is, it really, it really does help out. It can take a disintegrated cannon, which is range 36, assault 3, strength 5, AP minus 3, 2 damage. Disintegrated cannon is slightly more points, I believe. 30 points for a disintegrated cannon, so it's 10 points more. It's got less strength, less AP, and less damage. But it is a, still a very, very good viable choice for killing the heavy, um, heavily armoured infantry. So Terminators, um, monsters, things like that. Because it's strength 5, uh, AP minus 3 and 2 damage, it's, you're going to be kicking out a lot of shots. And it's Assault 3, so 3 shots. So it's still quite a good, valuable option. Um, melee wise, it's got Blade Veins. Blade Veins gives it is strength 4, minus 1 AP, 1 damage. Shock Prow which is a weapon option, I believe. Uh, shock Prow, one point for a Shock Prow. Uh, blade Veins are zero points. So a Shock Prow is melee, strength is user, so you're gonna be strength six, minus one AP, it does one damage. But rules wise, uh, if you can make a maximum of one close combat. Oh, sorry, you can make a maximum of one close combat attack with a shock prow each turn. Any remaining attacks must be used with a different weapon. So you can only use one attack, one of the, one of the attacks with a shock prow. If the bearer charges turn successful attacks with this weapon have damage characteristic of three plus rather than one. Uh, D3, sorry, rather than one. So if you charge, you're going to do D3 damage, which is quite nice. Uh, this model may take. I'll go into options. This model may replace its Dark Lance with a Disintegrated Cannon. So obviously it's going to be 95 points base, you then have to pay for the Dark Lance, so plus 20 points. So you're going to be looking at what, uh, 95, 105, 150, 115 points base. Uh, Shock Prow, extra one point. If you've got the if you've got the points, you know, tech it, why not? It's, it might be, might be worth it eventually. Um, <laughs> Open topped, 
these are the abilities basically you can shoot out of it you can't fire overwatch out of it because enemy units are charging the vehicle they're not charging the squad so that was in the FAQ um, so you can't fire overwatch out of it but the vehicle itself can still fire overwatch um, you can still fire your pistols out of it even if you're in combat so if you've got 10 witches in say um, those witches can fire out of it in the shooting phase in if the vehicle is in combat so that's quite it's quite handy really night shields it's got five plus in vulnerable save against range weapons so against any form of range weapon it's got five plus vulnerable save which is really handy and you do make these um, don't just don't just forget about it um, think oh it's only in, only against range it, it's something to remember it is really really good um, explodes all vehicles have this rule um, if this model is reduced to zero wounds roll a d6 before removing it from the battlefield and before any embark models disembark on a roll of a six it explodes uh, and each unit within six inches suffer d3 mortal wounds so it explodes then you roll the the whole you know um, d3 if you roll a six all enemy units in the six inches or all units within the six inches of d3 wounds then you place the models you don't place the models then do the whole um, roll a d6 for the model if you roll a one it's removed you don't then do that as well it's um, that's, it's, that's how it specifically states it here hover distance and ranges are always measured to and from the model's hull even though it has a base so you measure it from the hull transport this model can transport 10 Incombi or Drakari infantry models each grotesque takes up a space of two models so no change there uh, people were using this as an excuse to have Scourge and Hellions inside the Raider um, and it's now being FAQ'd so you can't do it so shame on you for doing that because how would a how would a, a Hellion be able to get in there with his skyboard? He would probably hang it off the side and then jump off it, which, which would look pretty cool actually to convert one with like skyboards hanging on the side. But it's, I think it's, it, would, it was pretty dirt. You know, I'd, I'd seen some people run two units of five Scourge with four Dark Lancers in each in the Raider. You know, it was, it was, it was pretty filth. Um, it was something that I, I'd like spoken about and laughed about, but I, you know, I never never did it. Um, so yeah, you can have ten models in the in the unit, ten infantry models in the unit, and each grotesque test takes up two model spaces. That's not changed. That was exactly the same rule as previous edition. Keywords: the one that you've got to the one that you've got to remember here is homunculus coven. So if you've got a homunculus within six inches of the raider, it's going to be toughness six, not toughness five. Keywords: vehicle transport, fly raider. So fly means fly basically means if you're in combat. You can disengage from combat. So if you're fighting a unit here, you, and you can disengage, and you can still shoot your full ballistic skill, whatever whatever it's going to be. Uh, a raider is obviously going to be three plus if you're still on your maximum amount of wounds. So how I've used raiders in games before, they are very very good. So yeah, so raiders nowadays are a very good viable option. Uh, I've got six painted at the minute. Um, whether I'll have whether I'll need more painted than that, I don't know. I think six is quite sufficient, really, at the minute. I don't intend. I don't want to go too too mad with the dark Eldar because I've got so many other armies I want to do. Um, but yeah, they're a lot more survivable now compared to what they used to be. They are a very good, strong, viable option. A very good choice. Um, something that I definitely want to be using a lot more. How I've used them before is I've had a unit of grotesques in them. <clears throat> Grotesques are um, very, very good in a raider. You can obviously take five in a raider now. Um, with the homunculus behind it, the, the raider is going to be toughness six. When the, when the grotesques get out, the grotesques are going to be high toughness as well. We'll cover the grotesques in another video. So, yeah, um, it was it was very, very good, very, very strong option um, because the raider is movement fourteen. If you're setting up at the front line and you're going to get first turn, you can move 14 inches, and then when it's a charge, if you charge, if you get in combat in that turn one, it's still quite a val viable combat, you know, combat choice because you're going to have 
three attacks, you're going to be strength six. You can, if you have a shot prow, you're going to be doing D3 damage. You're probably not going to you're not going to kill a massive amount of stuff with it. Don't get me wrong, it, it's not you don't it's not a viable combat choice to to be using. But if you're in combat turn one, your opponent then has to deal with you straight away. Your opponent then either has to fall back from combat to shoot from you, and then if he doesn't kill that that vehicle, that unit of grotesque will then just jump out three inches and then assault you straight away turn two. If you're still locked in combat and your enemy model can't physically surround you because because the raider is so long if you can have just the tip of it in combat the enemy unit can only pile in three inches so it can't physically get all the way around you cover your 360 your grotesques will be able to disengage from the vehicle disembark sorry from the vehicle three inches so out of combat and then counter charge in turn two as well so the raider is a very very good viable option now for for getting units around the board and the fact that it is movement 14 and it can uh, still advance and shoot obviously if it advances it's going to be minus one to hit because it's weapons turn to assault but you can still you can still do that you know you can still shoot even if you advance nowadays so yeah raider is a very very big bonus in the dark eldar uh, army I, I believe these days especially especially now more so than ever so finally we're going to go into the next, or the last and final transport option, which is the sturdy but never forgotten Venom. Okay, the Venom. Venom has a movement of 16 inches, is weapon skill 4+, plus, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength and toughness 5, 6 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7 with a 4 plus armor save. It doesn't have a damage chart. Damage chart. I think how Games Workshop are working it is if vehicles have less than 10 wounds, not 10 wounds or less, it has to be physically less than 10 wounds. They're not bothering giving it a damage chart. So a Venom, points wise nowadays, is 65 points. So it's gone up 10 points, uh, not 10 points. Um, 15 points, I believe. I believe it was 50 points last edition. So it's gone up a little bit, but it's a lot more survivable. Uh, again, just like the Raider, it's not one shot pop anymore because it's toughness five and it's got six wounds. It might, well, I say it's not one shot pop, it, it could be, you know, a last cannon could shoot it um, and it could fail all of its saves and it, the, the last cannon could roll a six on the DC. It, it could be a one shot pop, it's, it's highly unlikely, um, but it is a lot more survivable compared to how it, you know, compared to how it used to be. Splinter Cannon, we've already got, got into Splinter Cannons um, with the Carbolite Warriors, um, so it can have one Splinter Cannon on top, it can have an additional one on the bottom, so it can have two Splinter Cannons um, at 12 points each, I believe they were, just double check that, so I need to, I'm trying to remember the points myself, uh, Splinter Cannon, 15 points, sorry, it's still a very, very much, you know, viable choice to have two splinter cannons um, a lot of people are complaining that you have to be within 18 inches for it to be a sort six or rapid fire six basically how it used to be but because your movement is 16 now you're going to be zipping around the board like like anyone's business and still be getting your 12 shots um, i was a bit unhappy with it to start off with and then i actually used it and it's not it's not so much a big deal at all people that complain about it haven't used it uh, people that complain about it haven't played a game with it, so play a game with it and then, you know, then then see what you think. Um, twin splinter rifle, obviously you swap. You don't bother with twin, twin splinter rifle. Just keep your uh, keep your splinter cannon. Um, blade veins again, just like the raider. Um, strength four, AP minus one, does one damage. Open topped for the abilities. Exactly the same as the Raider, we're not going to go into that. Flicker Field, now this is an important one. I've seen some battle reports on YouTube and a lot of people seem to forget this, don't don't use this. It's a very important thing to learn and to remember, especially because it benefits you. Your opponent must subtract one from all rolls to hit against this model in the shooting phase. So any form of shooting against it is minus one to hit, uh, which is doesn't sound a great deal because if something's hitting on two they're actually now hitting on threes but it really does help you know getting them to, getting people to 
be harder to hit against your vehicles it really does help it re really is important to remember uh, explodes it's exactly the same as the raider exactly same as other vehicles when they explode and monstrous creatures which is classed as death throws i think they call it but instead of it being d3 mortal wounds it is only one mortal wound so it's slightly less because it is a slightly smaller vehicle uh, night shields uh, which is exactly the same as the Raider. Uh, this model has a 5 plus vulnerable save against ranged weapons. Uh, transport capacity 5 in Kabi or Dakari infantry. Uh, models other than Grotex. I don't know why it states that basically. Any, any, your infantry in, in Kabi can be going in at 5 models. Again, keyword homunculus covens. If a homunculus within 6 inches of it and it's classed as a homunculus coven vehicle, makes it tough than a 6. Um, again, that buff is very, very good, very handy, uh, making things plus one toughness. Uh, this has got the fly ability as well, so even if it's in combat, it can disengage from combat and shoot everything with its maximum ballistic skill. Um, I have used Venoms before. I have used Venoms in previous edition. I've used them in this edition. They were annoying for the opponent, really good for us, previous edition. They are exactly the same in this edition, apart from they survive a little bit longer. Um, I have used them in a few games now and they are still a very very good choice a very viable option for your small units I usually run a five man a carbolite warrior unit in them with a blaster so yeah it's a very very good choice very very good option so that is it for troops choices and dedicated transport and the next video we will probably cover elites or fast attack i'm not decided which one we're going to do yet uh, probably do elites um so yeah so i hope you've enjoyed the video and the sun is really glaring look uh, yeah the sun is <laughs> yeah it's quite uh, hot here in the uk my hay fever has been terrible um but yeah so that is it for the troops and dedicated transport video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up uh, like and share it let your friends know um if you've got any comments about it, if you've used some troops in here, if you've used them differently in your games, comment and let everybody else know and let me know how, how you use them. Because um, I'm still learning about the new new Drakari in 8th edition. Um, so yeah, so that is it for this video and I'll speak to you guys next time. Toodaloo!